The worsening drought has Texas taking a serious look at water desalination plants that can remove the salt from brackish groundwater and eventually from seawater. KXAN's David Scott went to the experts who say it could and must become viable for Texas to quench its growing thirst. Water. It fuels our industry and businesses. It nourishes our crops and livestock. It sustains our home and provides recreation. In Texas, water is our lifeblood. But in Texas, the tide is running out. El Paso now has the largest desal plant of its kind in the world. And they're building one even bigger in San Antonio. But desalination remains hostage to the cost of technology and the willpower of people. As long as our cable bill is more expensive than our water bill, our priorities are still screwed up. 71% of our surface is covered in water. Of that, 97% you can't drink. Ah, seawater. Twice as expensive to desalinate as brackish groundwater. So we mostly rely on freshwater rivers and lakes. But if this record drought continues... We may find it's not as easy to build reservoirs or put in wells as, as it's been in the past. And if those options, you know, in whole or in part come off the table, desalination becomes a much more viable. Texas is a vast mosaic of different rainfalls and topography, different regions, different solutions. Yeah, just the cost of building the pipeline and then putting the pump and pumping all that water uphill very, very expensive. And so the solutions to water shortages tend to be more local solutions. Any solution, conservation, new reservoirs, desalination, the price is only going up. David Scott, KXAN News. Well, a special task force on the future of desalination will hold its first in a series of statewide public hearings in Austin on Monday, June 16th. Right now, desalination plants in Texas produce 220 million gallons of water a day. More than half of that is drinkable. The rest is for industry. Mm -hmm.